So we can't really talk about importing data into Elasticsearch without talking about Logstash. What's Logstash all about? Basically, it sits between your data and where you want to put it. And commonly, that will be between a log file being generated on a web server somewhere and Elasticsearch in the context of this course. But Logstash is actually much more flexible than that. It can import data from pretty much anywhere. It doesn't have to just be local files. It could be coming from some other system entirely like Kafka or some distributed file system like S3 or HDFS or something like that. And it can put it not just in Elasticsearch, but other places at the same time, like uh, Amazon Web Services services, or to a Hadoop cluster, or some database like MongoDB. And it can actually import things from more than one source at a time and output it to more than one destination at a time as well. So it's a very powerful tool for pushing your data around, basically, ingesting data from some distributed fleet of things that are generating lots and lots of data and funneling it into some system where it will be archived and analyzed later on. And it's more than just plumbing. It can also do things like deriving structure from your unstructured data. So in the case of parsing web logs, for example, Logstash can parse out those web log lines and actually structure them into fields that have given names. And it can filter out data as it passes through it. It can transform data. It can do things like anonymize personal data as soon as it sees it, or even exclude personal data entirely. And that can be very important for legal reasons if you want to make sure that you're not transferring personally identifiable information around your network unnecessarily. That's a, a big deal, right? You can also do geolocation lookups. So for example, they can take a look at your access logs from a web server and automatically figure out where that log came from just based on the IP address that was logged. And it can scale across many nodes. So part of the power of Logstash is that it can serve as sort of a buffer between the systems generating your data and where you want to put it. So if you have like a big load spike, for example, on your web server fleet, uh, that doesn't necessarily have to translate into a spike in actually transferring that data into Elasticsearch or something else. Your fleet of log stash hosts can just serve as sort of a buffer between those two systems. It does guarantee at least once delivery. And if you want to take a look at the complete list of plugins available for Logstash, you can follow that link there. But here's a sampling of just how versatile it is. You can see that it's not limited to local files or even the Elastic Beats framework or anything else. There's a huge list of data sources that you can have Logstash listen to and watch and transform and feed that data to other systems. And pretty much anything you can imagine, any protocol. You can just have data being published on HTTP or you know talk to some database or whatever. S3, there's a lot of common systems on here that you might find useful. And it also has a huge variety of output destinations as well. You can see that Elasticsearch is just one of many possible destinations here. You can send it pretty much anywhere you want to. So very flexible and very powerful system again. I just can't say that enough. Now, typical usage in the context of Elasticsearch will look something like this. So the modern way of doing things, if you're going to be doing something like publishing web logs into Elasticsearch for visualization later on, would be to install a lightweight client called FileBeat on the individual web server hosts. And then FileBeat would send data to your Logstash cluster, which would then buffer those up and parse things out and do geolocation and things like that, and then send things into Elasticsearch to be indexed. Now, sort of the legacy way of doing things would be to just use Logstash directly on your uh, actual web servers and actually do all the parsing and imparting of structure and geolocation actually on the web server hosts themselves. Obviously, that's not quite as resilient of a system, but that's kind of the old fashioned way of doing it where you just have Logstash listening to local files, actually listening directly to your access log or your error log or both on each individual web host and then publishing that data into your Elasticsearch cluster. Either way works. Uh, again, the more modern ways to use FileBeat, which is part of the Beats framework, uh, to talk to Logstash is sort of an intermediate layer. Now, if you don't have FileBeat, that, uh, that gets back to what we used to call the Elk stack, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana where the L stands for log stash, and that's a tried and true method of actually importing data. But these days we use what's called the elastic stack instead because it's really more about using the Beats framework than log stash. We'll talk about uh, file beat and the Beats framework in more detail later on in the course. For now, however, let's set up log stash on an individual host that we have. Well, for example, the one that we already set up, have that monitor an access log from Apache and import that access log into Elasticsearch.